Act One, Scene One, of Rollo's Wild Oat, by Claire Coomer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Cast in order of their appearance. Houston, Rollo's man. Read by Zames Curran. Lydia, Rollo's sister. Read by Tricia G. Rollo Webster, a youth with aspirations. Read by Chuck Williamson. Mr. Stein, a theatrical manager. Read by Son of the Exiles. Goldie Macduff, an actress. Read by Devorah Allen. George Lucas, an actor. Read by Thomas Peter. Mrs. Park Gales, of the profession. Read by Beth Thomas. Wortley Camperdown, of the profession. Read by Philip Gould. Thomas Skitterling, of the profession. Read by Alan Mapstone. Aunt Lane, Rollo's great aunt. Read by T. J. Burns. Horatio Webster, Rollo's grandfather. Read by Larry Wilson. Bella, housemaid at the Webster's. Read by Lian Yao. Stage directions. Read by Todd. Act One, Scene One, Rollo's studio, Central Park West, New York City. Time twelve o'clock on a morning in early spring. Scene Two, the same the following evening. Act Two, Scene One, Rollo's dressing room. The Oddity Theatre. Scene two, on the stage, that very moment. Act three, scene one, sitting room, Grandfather Webster's house, Shellbrook, a few hours later. Scene two, the same, the following morning. Rollo's Wild Oat, Act one, scene one. A duplex apartment, a large studio with a stairway, practical, and balcony which runs across rear of scene. This leads to Rollo's bedroom. Below is swing door leading into kitchenette. The room is artistically furnished, contains a baby grand piano, and some good chairs and a table. There are rugs hanging over the balcony, and some tall Japanese jars containing artificial cherry blossoms. The effect of the room in color is gold and blue, and it is Japanese in character. At rise, on curtain, doorbell buzzer. Enter Houston from the kitchenette, pulling on his coat. Houston is a very superior gentleman's gentleman, rather melancholy in appearance. He goes to door right center, admits Lydia. She is an attractive girl of eighteen, smartly dressed. She enters briskly as though she had a right to be there. Really, you should not have come up, Miss Lydia. Lydia, left of chair, right. I don't know what you mean, Houston, saying that I can't come up to my own brother's studio. Houston, right of chair, right. It's only that I had strict orders, miss, not to let anyone up. Well, a sister isn't anybody, Houston. She is not included in such orders. Lydia lays her neck piece on the piano. Please remember that in future. Where is my brother? Mr. Rollo is not up yet, miss. Not up? He was out late last night, and he said he was going to have a very busy day, and didn't wish to be disturbed before twelve. Lydia, left center. A busy day. When is he going to begin to have it? You'd better wake him up, Houston. No, miss. I am getting paid to carry out Mr. Rollo's instructions, and carry them out I shall. If he does pay you, Houston, it will be out of the money Grandfather gave him to go into business with. As to that, I cannot say, miss. And do you think Grandfather would have given him the money if he had thought Mr. Rollo was going to leave home and come in town and have a studio and have you and everything? As to that, I cannot say, miss. Lydia sits center right of table center. Grandfather thinks it is a dreadful thing for you to do, Houston, to leave us without a moment's notice. You know it's impossible to get anyone in the country this time of year. Yes, miss. 
don't think I have it so easy here. All there is to this place is what you see, and Mr. Rollo's bedroom upstairs. I've got no place to sit when he has callers, but the sink in the kitchenette. Buzz Kitchenette Mr. Rollo's Tray Exit Houston into Kitchenette Lydia goes to piano and begins to play briskly. I love to wander in the spring when tiny birds are darting high. I love to wander in the spring and drink my fill and drink my fill of sun and sky. Rollo enters in dressing gown and slippers. He stands on balcony looking down at Lydia. She looks up. Rollo is a rather serious young man of twenty two or twenty three. If you love to wander in the spring, don't let me detain you. Comes down stairway. So I'm not safe from your persecutions even here. Houston said you were going to have a busy day. I thought you'd better begin. Always thinking of others. Lydia left center, leaving piano and coming to him with a coaxing smile. Rollo, please don't be cross because I came. Rollo, right center. I'm not cross. The utter hopelessness of getting away from my family depresses me. That's all. I'll feel better when I've had something to eat. Houston enters with tray. Will you have it down here, sir? Rollo sits right of table. Yes. Try to keep as many people out as possible while I'm eating my breakfast. Will you, Houston? As Houston sets tray on table. Lydia, sitting left of table. It wasn't Houston's fault that I came up, Rollo. He told me not to, but I told the elevator man you expected me. I hope you told him you were my sister. No, I didn't. Should I have? Houston, you'd better step out and tell the elevator man it was my sister that came up. Just mention it casually, you know. Don't say that's why you rang for him. Yes, sir. Starts right to door. What shall I say I rang for him to come up for? Oh, anything. Ask him why the service is so bad at night when he's not on. That'll please him. Houston exits upright. Rollo, please tell me, what are you going to do with your money? How's grandfather? He misses you dreadfully, Rollo, and so does Toby. Every time I go into your room, he growls and barks so. Grandfather? Oh, Toby. Well, why do you go into my room? Because I miss you, too. Houston enters, starts for kitchenette. Isn't there some orange marmalade in the place, Houston? I'll see, sir. Exits into kitchenette. Grandfather gave me a check for exactly the same amount he gave you, to do what I liked with. Wasn't it dear of him? Yes. Have you got it with you? No, fortunately I haven't. Well, it doesn't matter. I don't need it yet. Rollo, you're really going to begin to sow your wild oats, aren't you? My dear, I am going to sow just one oat. If it doesn't turn out right, I shall hand myself over to Grandfather and become interested in. Houston, who has entered with jam. Orange marmalade, sir? Thank you, Houston. You can find most anything in that kitchenette, if you take the trouble to look. You don't even have to trouble to look for a lot of things in there, sir. There's mice, too. Thanks. I don't care for any. One oat. Tell me about it, Rollo. How's Aunt Lane? She's well. I left her at Wanamaker's. Well, I hope she stays there. Phone rings. Houston at phone. Mr. Stein. Calling by appointment. Rollo, importantly, rising. Tell him to come up. Houston, into phone. Mr. Stein can come up. Exits. Rollo to Lydia. I should say so. Now you've kept me talking all this foolishness. I don't want to see him in this dressing gown. Lydia, coming center. 
i'll see him i'll tell him you'll be right down you will oblige me by going back to wanamaker's at once he hurriedly exits up the stairs houston you'd better take the tray houston from outside in kitchenette just a moment miss rollo off houston where are my shoes houston emerging from kitchenette passes rapidly up the stairs with the shoes containing shoe trees coming sir lydia after a moment's hesitation goes to piano sings i love to wander in the spring when tiny birds are darting high studio bell i love to wander in the spring and drink my fill and drink my fill of sun and sky bell rings again lydia goes to the door and opens it admitting mr stein come right in stein going right center i am calling to see mr webster lydia right of stein yes i know i'm his er, secretary <laughs> no i'm not really i'm his sister stein not believing her smiles i am mr stein miss uh... won't you take off your coat and put it somewhere thanks houston coming down the stairs let me take your coat takes stein's coat stein to houston mr webster <laughs> no that's houston houston exits with tray i don't know him lydia crossing left he's our oh well it doesn't matter do sit down i'll sit here on piano bench are you fond of music mr stein stein follows lydia left sits left of table i don't mind it i hear so much of it in my business i got used to it what is your business mr stein i am a theatrical manager a theatrical manager it's a wonderful business isn't it to be able to make so much money and have so much fun at the same time stein looking a little dubious you a professional miss no not yet my grandfather is very much opposed to the stage oh you got a grandfather yes haven't you i suppose i had one but i don't know where he is i wish i didn't know where mine was both laugh <laughs> oh i ought not to say that he's a perfect darling at times enter rollo down the stairs with dignity mr stein lydia just a moment takes her aside right center wanamakers lydia takes her fur stein bows lydia makes a feint of going out but slips up the stairs near the door and goes into rollo's bedroom unseen won't you smoke offering cigarettes which stein refuses a cigar stein assents rollo looks for cigars in desk left and then let's get down to business yes that's a good idea because i haven't got very much time goes right of table rollo finds cigars stein takes one business of lighting stein sits right of table i was interested in y'all letter mr webster because it's just between seasons you see and i might take an interest in something if it was all right rollo puts cigars back in desk going left of table well my proposition is very simple no reason why we shouldn't understand each other from the start if you are interested all right and if you are not all right too well mr webster the first thing i will say is i've been in this business for twenty years and i confess i don't know anything about it rollo sitting left of table i see well do you think that is a good thing well it is a fact what i mean to say is if i knew what would be a successful play i'd never put on anything else but i don't know nobody knows i see it's the public 
you can't count on it give em something good and i'll go to see something bad give em something bad and i don't like that neither i see well of course there's no trouble about my play it's a great play and the critics will all like it that's what they all think mr webster no one ever wrote a bad play that knew it well i didn't write this play and when i say it's good i mean it's a play the critics will respect so there'll be no trouble with them they may not like my acting but they can't find fault with the play at least they never have oh it has been played before what is the name of it mr webster rollo taking a cigarette hamlet there is a muttered exclamation and light glass crash from the kitchenette hamlet you think anyone wants to see it they always have it's lived all these years lived but how you're making a mistake mr webster if you money to put in show business take it from me let hamlet alone no mr stein i can't let hamlet alone because he won't let me alone i'm sorry i asked goldie to meet me here who is goldie she's a little gal got a lot of talent mr webster dances and might make a hit in a gal show you know oh a very pretty gal well i'd like to see her i've got a lot of new ideas about producing the play it's just possible i might use her tain't possible there's a hamlet slip by me mr webster you're speaking of the old piece ain't you that's got to be or not to be in it yes to be or not to be whether tis better stein rising i'm sorry mr webster i wish i could do business with you but i'm a man that don't like to see anyone throw their money away money is hard to get not always phone rings enter houston from kitchenette houston some scotch and soda houston at phone to rollo it's miss mcduff calling it ain't worth while to let her up oh yes if you don't mind ask her to come up houston into phone let the young lady come up please exits into kitchenette i have leased a theater you have leased it what theater mr webster the oddity but it ain't finished yet it will be when i get in it stein crosses the table and sits right of table what are those new ideas you got about producing mr webster well extreme simplicity in the first place it's been done to death unless you got some new kind what do you mean by simplicity i would use the same set for every scene just throwing on different colored lights to give an effect of ghastliness beauty morning or evening as the case might be the same set for a bad room or a jail certainly the text the costumes the lights tell the story the costumes people have gone to bed in a jail you know if they are unlucky enough rollo rising and crossing to right of stein i know but you never saw pink boudoir lights in a jail then i'd like to see a flight of steps leading down into the audience and if at any time during the play some gifted auditor was moved to join in the performance i'd like to allow it i don't want to be separated from my audience it's a good thing to be separated from a mr webster it ain't the gifted ones that usually want to join in i'm afraid those steps would lead to a general roof house especially with hamlet houston enters with scotch and soda any more ideas mr webster 
Rollo, crossing to left of table. Yes, with my very modern methods, perfect naturalness and simplicity, I would like to combine the old school and the other actors, exemplifying the fact that Hamlet was a modern spirit, surrounded by old forms, old customs, and traditions. All but Ophelia. I would have her just such a one as myself. Doorbell buzzer. Stein, rising. You mean have the part played by a man? Houston goes to door. No, no, but modern, you know? Simple and natural. Houston opens door, announcing. Miss Macduff. Enter Goldie. She is a girl of twenty-one or two, rather timid, naturally, but brave as occasion may require. She is blonde and has an expression of arch wistfulness. She is dressed in a plain blue serge tailor-made suit. How do, Goldie? This is Mr. Webster. I'm very glad to meet you. Gives him her hand. Stein, dropping down right, I guess I got you here on a full sail arm, Goldie. Really? Looking anxiously at Rollo. Yes, Mr. Webster's going to play Shakespeare. Shakespeare? Oh. Does that mean horror or admiration or what? Why, it doesn't mean anything. Only that lets me out. If you'd come into my office yesterday, I could have put you into a nice little review. The Midnight Ride. The Supper Show. Good money. You know I can't do those things. Why? Goldie, surprised, looking at him. It sounds so silly. I get sleepy about twelve o'clock. I'm used to going to bed early. Ain't that ridiculous? I never heard anyone on the stage talk like you, Goldie. It's excitement keeps you awake. It's temperament, that's what does it. Ain't you got any? I don't believe so. I'm relieved, of course, after it's over, if I haven't done anything too dreadful. But that's all. She's just made for it. Ain't it funny? There is a pause, and Rollo looks thoughtful. I'm afraid we're taking Mr. Webster's time. No, no, not at all. I was just thinking. Goldie eyes him nervously. In the play I'm going to do, there is a very sweet, simple young girl. Unhappy, you know, the way they usually are. Which play is it, Mr. Webster? Why, uh, Hamlet. Oh, Hamlet. Yes, Hamlet. <sighs> Nothing to be afraid of, you know. It's just his name. Just the way Rollo is mine. Of course, only... Only what? Rollo seems so different, so much nicer. Oh, awful name. I wouldn't have had it, only my mother was so fond of reading. Tell me, do you sing? Hardly at all. Well, that's quite enough. Ophelia goes mad, you know, and sings. Well, I might do that. Mr. Webster, excuse me. Have I made a mistake? Is this the old Hamlet, or have you maybe made some changes in it? Have you made it into a musical show? No, I haven't. Shakespeare put songs in for Ophelia. <laughs> Not exactly songs, but fragments fragments i would like to hear you sing but i can't play for you oh i can play for myself but i don't really think there's any use in it do you yes i don't know of anything more important in the world i don't think this piano is very good but it has all the keys on it <sighs> please won't you rollo goes to piano he plays a little Stein and Goldie down right. I believe this fellow's a nut. You know, this show he's going to do may be very funny. Oh, Mr. Stein. Goldie goes to Rollo. Stein follows and sits at table. 
Rolo, after playing a few chords, rising, Seems to be all right. Houston must have oiled it this morning. Sing something sad. Something about flowers, memories, and albums, and old forget-me-nots, and all that sort of thing. Goldie, sitting at piano. Would one about roses do? Yes, of course it would. Is it sad? Well, it's quite sad. Good. Go ahead. Goldie begins to sing softly. Blushing John Rosas, to you I've given. Stops. No, that's wrong. Rolo, leaning over piano. It's beautiful. Go on, please do. Blushing June Rosas, breathing of heaven. Do one that petals like tears and like a blushing June Rosas to you I've given. They tell my story, I love you so. Perfectly beautiful. Oh, no, it was dreadful. It wasn't. Isn't there any more of it? Oh, yes, that was just the refrain. But it's enough, I should think. But it isn't. Do just begin it. I can't. I can't sing. My voice is all gone. I've been crying. Rises. Crying? Oh, oh, dear. Well, never mind. You've really sung quite enough. Your voice is pathetic. I should think so. Uh, just as it should be. I know you can do it. You shall play Ophelia. Goldie, shocked, sits on piano bench. Oh, Mr. Webster, you don't really mean that. I certainly do mean it. Oh, but that would be dreadful. Why, I couldn't any more play Ophelia. Why not? Because it's a great part, and someone great should play it. Not at all. Ophelia wasn't a great tragedian, forty-five years old. She was just a simple little girl like you. She fell in love with me. That's all you've got to do. I mean, you can play Ophelia because you're young and pretty. Is your hair long? Goldie, rising. Oh, no, I couldn't, Mr. Webster. Yes, it is long. Rollo, turning to Stein. Well, Mr. Stein, Miss Macduff is just what I want. Stein, who has been enjoying the scotch and soda, rising. What? For Ophelia. Now, about the rest of the cast, if you want to go on with it. Well, I'm getting quite interested in your project, Mr. Webster. Good. Then why don't we go ahead until something stops us? I don't care who you engage for the rest of the cast, as long as they're regular Shakespearean actors. But they must have had experience. Well, if Shakespearean actors don't have experiences, I don't know who does. Suppose you bring an assortment round here tomorrow night. It might be as well for me to look at them before you engage them. Well, that couldn't do any harm. I'll think it over, Mr. Webster, and let you know. All right. There's no risk in it for you, you know. Houston comes from kitchenette and hovers over tray and bottles. That's all right, but I don't want to see you lose anything, neither. Don't worry about me. Well, I think we may as well be going long. We had a very pleasant call anyway, Mr. Webster. Houston helps Stein on with his coat. Goldie crosses right. Won't you have something? To Goldie, who casts a frightened look at the tray. Oh, no, nothing. I never do. Just plain soda, I meant. No, thank you. You will be here in front me. Come and go there. Goldie crosses right. Rollo to Goldie. Must you go? Won't you let Houston make you a cup of tea? Goldie, 
crossing two steps. No, thank you, Mr. Webster. Well, you'll come tomorrow night, won't you? I will, if... I'll try to, Mr. Webster. Crosses two steps more. Can't I call for you? No. Oh, no. Goodbye. Stein and Goldie exit, the door being held open for them patiently by Houston. Rollo goes to piano and tries to play Goldie's song. Blushing June roses to you I've given. Ready studio bell. Houston, coming left center. Pardon me, sir, but would it be convenient for you, for me to go for a walk in the park? Certainly. Playing, sings again. La ta 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 ta, tears ere I go. I think it would rest me to spend an hour in the zoo. All right, Houston. If you can rest in the zoo, you must need it. What's the trouble? Do you have to work too hard? I'm not complaining about the work, sir. It's the kitchenette. A man can't be shut up in that place and keep his self-respect. Can't you sit up in my bedroom? No, sir. I can't be running up and down the stairs every time you call me. Well, the only other place I can suggest is under the piano. Continues song. Blushing June roses. A hurried ring at door. Houston goes, opens it, and admits Goldie. Houston returns to Kitchenette. Oh, Mr. Webster, do please forgive me for coming back. Rollo, rising. Forgive you? Why, I'm perfectly delighted to see you. I've missed you terribly. I was just playing the music for your entrance when you came in. Did you hear me? Goldie, right of table. It's very hard for me to tell you why I came back, Mr. Webster. Rollo, left of table. Then why do it? Suppose we say you came back because I was wishing that you would. And wishing that I had asked for your telephone number. Have you got one? No, Mr. Webster. The man in the drugstore gives me messages if they are important. The man in the drugstore? Well, does he decide whether they're important or not? Yes. And what is the name of the drugstore? It's Riddle's Drugstore, Chelsea 4321. But don't let's speak of such things at a time like this, Mr. Webster. A time like this? Is this some sort of a time? Oh, indeed. Indeed it is. Enter Houston with hat. Starts for door right. Good heavens. Then we'd better fortify ourselves for it. Houston, some tea? Houston goes into kitchenette very dejectedly. Goldie sits right of table. Oh, I had to come to tell you, to beg you. Please, Mr. Webster, don't go on with it. Don't go on with it? He's going to do it. He said so on the way down in the elevator. But I'm glad he is. <laughs> I expected him to. But you don't know him as I do. It isn't because he thinks it will be good. Of course not. It is just... just to get your money. He thinks if it does succeed it will be because it is so bad. Never mind what he thinks. I wouldn't even accuse him of such a thing. But do you realize what he is? He's not a good manager at all, Mr. Webster. Of course not. No good manager would have anything to do with me. And I am nothing at all, Mr. Webster. I don't suppose there is a worse actress in the world. Enter Houston with tea tray and service. I'm terribly afraid in the first place. My mouth dries up and I want to run right off the stage. Houston serves tea. Will you have lemon or cream? Cream, I think, is better for you. It's more soothing. Nods to Houston. Houston exits for cream. I do wish you would save yourself from us, Mr. Webster, before it is too late. Rollo, getting Book of Hamlet from Piano. I'm going to lend this to you, 
so you can read over the part of Ophelia. Please don't. You won't mind when you see how much Ophelia is like you. She's afraid and everything. I know. I know what you mean. Don't make me, please. I know the part perfectly well. Enter Houston. Pours cream in tea. Rollo sits left of table, surprised. You know it. Oh, yes. My grandmother made me learn all those parts. Juliet and Desdemona and Rosalind and Ophelia. She did. What a wonderful grandmother. Yes, she was wonderful, Mr. Webster. Perhaps you've heard of her. They called her the beautiful Mary Mal. Houston drops pitcher on tray. I never did. My fault, I'm sure. Houston shows surprise and interest. He sets pitcher on tray, making a little clatter. She was a great actress. My mother went on the stage, too, in England. She wasn't successful at all, and I am even worse. Poor grandmother. It ruined her life to think we didn't inherit it, you know. Houston exits into kitchenette. But how do you know you didn't? Oh, Mr. Webster, how do we know anything? I'm simply awful on the stage. I'm not so bad off. You see, I'm not. Taking the teacup. I can lift up a cup and everything, but on the stage my hands take the strangest shapes. My feet don't look the same. Don't let me do it. My dear child, I don't care what you may or may not have been. You will find that playing Ophelia with me is quite different from anything you have ever imagined. Enter Houston again with hat. Crosses to door right. You're not drinking your tea. Isn't it right? Oh, yes, I'm sure it's delicious. I know what's the matter with it. It needs some cookies. Houston, order up some of those cookies. The nutty ones. They never send up the nutty ones, sir. Get them yourself. Houston exits door right. I don't want them, truly. Wait till you see them. They look like Mount Fujiyama, all exploding in beautiful almonds in the middle. Goldie rises. Rollo anxiously follows suit. Well, that's all, Mr. Webster. I can't do any more than warn you. I must go. Starts right. Rollo crosses to her. Let me get a cab and take you home. No, no, thank you. I live way downtown. I was going way downtown anyway. Oh, not as far as I go, I'm sure. What street is it? Eighth Street. I was, though. I was going to Seventh Street. Oh, Mr. Webster, what were you going to Seventh Street for? Why, there are only funny little shops there. I know it. I was going to one of those funny little shops to buy some of that funny old stuff. What do you call it? What do you do with it? Well, you decide that after you get it. I was going, really. I can prove it. Look, here's my hat and stick. Gets them from right of staircase. Please? No, Mr. Webster, I can't believe that you were going down to 7th Street for anything. Well, could you believe I was going down to 42nd Street and Broadway? Yes. Then we'll go there. And I can take the subway. Yes. Won't that be jolly? I'll dash down and get a cab on the street. Takes the starter hours to do it. I'll be right back for you. Rollo goes out, closing door with a brisk slam. Lydia, upstairs, thinking they are both gone, sings. Goldie stands by fireplace. I love to wander in the spring. Enters from Rollo's bedroom upstairs and comes out on balcony singing. Sees Goldie. Oh, mercy! Exits hastily back into bedroom, closing door. Oh, mercy! Goldie stands dejectedly for a moment. 
Houston enters with cookies on a plate. He offers them to Goldie, who refuses them without speaking. They're the nutty ones, miss. He sets cookies on the table. If you'll excuse my saying so, miss, I heard you mention your grandmother, the beautiful Miss Moe. Yes. What would you say, miss, if I were to tell you that my father acted with her? Your father? What was his name? Houston, miss. The same name as mine. Only he was Estes, and I am James. Eustace Houston? Why, he was almost as great as Grandma. Yes, miss. That was him. And I was raised to follow in his footsteps. But what was the use? There was no call for acting in London. Only in the provinces. That was the only place where they would stand for Shakespeare. Are you sorry, Houston? I mean, would you have been happier, do you think, acting Shakespeare? Who can say, miss? I would like to have played Hamlet just once. But I might not have been any happier ha if I had. There is a great many, miss, that wish to play that part. I sometimes think Shakespeare had a great deal to answer for, in the general discontent among the laboring classes. Enter Rollo. Already? I've got a beautiful cab all lined with royal purple. <laughs> On to Forty Second Street. Houston exits into kitchenette. Mr. Webster, I've changed my mind. Really? On to Eighth Street? No, I don't want you to go with me at all. Oh. Do you really mean that? Yes, I do. Please let me go by myself. I'm used to it. But I'm not. I never let you go by yourself but once. And then I tried to stop you. What's the matter? How can you have taken such a dislike to me just since I've been downstairs? I haven't taken a dislike to you, but I want to go by myself. Enter Houston. Oh, very well then. Will you at least ride in my cab? Goldie crosses to right of Rollo. I'd rather not. Uh, will you let Houston put you on your subway? It's not necessary, truly. I suppose I'll never see you again. Oh, yes, tomorrow night, if you really want me for the pot. Oh, can I really have you if I want you? Oh, yes, I couldn't afford to refuse a pot. But I think it's better to be quite independent. I mean, about going home and things like that. Don't you? I think it's awful. But you won't always feel the way you do. I'm sure you won't. Perhaps even by the time you get downstairs, you'll feel differently about it. If you do, telephone up, and I'll come right down. Good boy. Goodbye. Exit Goldie. Shall I dismiss the cab, sir? Yes, or take it to the zoo. Thank you, sir. Exit Houston, door right. Enter Lydia down the stairway. Rollo, seeing her, crosses in front of table. What are you doing here? Sneak? I'm not. I'm just a loving, anxious sister. That's the same thing. You've been up there all the time? Well, after I started being up there, I couldn't stop, unless I jumped out the window. Coming down to right of table. Spying on me. I wouldn't have done it, Rollo, but my life is so uninteresting, and I had no idea that anyone was coming but Mr. Stein when I started sneaking. Neither had I. I know it, Rollo, and then she came, your wild oat. What do you mean, my wild oat? Is she pretty? Yes, she is. But there's nothing wild out about her. She wouldn't even let me take her to the subway in a cab. She was right, Rollo. Actresses have to be awfully careful of their reputations. Oh, Rollo, if I could only be like her. Don't be foolish. But why is it foolish? Oh, Rollo, won't you please let me be in it? Oh, please, Rollo, I'll do anything for you if you will. My poor child, have a cookie. Your mind seems to be quite unhinged. 
i don't want it rollo why can't i i must have some talent i'm your sister you know what i'm going to play don't you hamlet yes what would you like to be what do you think nature has fitted for you in the tragedy of hamlet i don't know i'd be willing to be anything just to have some fun like the rest of you fun you don't suppose we're doing it for fun well what are you doing it for no one wants you to do it i'm doing it because it's been my lifelong ambition isn't there just some little part i could play no there aren't any little parts i know there are there always are people just come on and then you never see them again i'd be willing to be one of those rollo i'm your only little sister suppose anything should happen to me then you'd be sorry yes i would and i can at least see this doesn't happen to you lydia her manner changing sits right of table i can't promise that i won't tell grandfather the whole thing then if it's so debasing i don't think you ought to do it if you tell grandfather before the opening performance i shall never speak of you as being my sister again that won't matter every one knows i am there's only one part you could possibly play and you certainly wouldn't want to do that i'd love to who is it one of the players who comes to announce the play that they play in the play will you let me do it rollo it's a part that requires wearing tights glancing at lydia to see the effect you wouldn't mind that i suppose no rollo not in shakespeare oh my dear darling brother what is my name in the play your name is prologue and all you have to say is for us and for our tragedy here stooping to your clemency we beg your hearing patiently lydia rising oh rollo you have made me so happy embracing him well it was quite unintentional lyd believe me curtain end of act one scene one act one scene two of Rollo's Wild Oat by Claire Coomer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act One, Scene Two. The same, at 8.30 the following evening. On Rise, Stein, Camperdown, Mrs. Park Gales, Skitterling, and Houston discovered. Houston at the phone. The others waiting for Rollo. Houston speaking into phone. Yes, sir. They've begun to come in. Quite a few are here, sir. Not Miss Macduff. Not yet, sir. To the people assembled. Mr. Weber says, if you'll please make yourself quite at home, he'll be here directly. Goes into hall, right where he stands ready to open door. Mrs. Park Gales, seated left of table, to Skitterling, who is standing above table with Camperdown. Mr. Skitterling, who is this Rollo Webster? Skitterling shrugs. Ask Mr. Stein. Who is Mr. Stein? Mrs. Park Gales, to Stein, who is seated in chair by fireplace, right. Mr. Stein, tell me about rollo webster stein comes to her certainly mrs gales why shall i tell you well who is he has he talent has he i don't know but he has a grandfather old horatio webster the air brake man oh horatio webster he was a great first nighter i think i've heard my grandmother speak of him Enter Lucas. Houston takes his hat. Thanks. Comes down right center. Do you know Mrs. Park Gales, Mr. Lucas? Lucas crosses left to Mrs. Park Gales. Mr. Stein drops down right. 
Don't insult me, Mr. Stein. Of course I do. Why, George, I thought you were playing in Detroit, at that new theatre, the Art Craft. No, my dear lady, I'm not. We rehearsed for three weeks, but they decided to turn it into a picture house. A great deal of craft and very little art. How horrible. The movies. Pictures are a great business. You take a picture and you got something. Yes, but what? You get all through with the actors, and there they are playing for you every night. If they're sick or dead, it don't make any difference. They are working for you just the same. Bell. Anything to make us work for nothing. Joins Camperdown and Skitterling. They cross to window seat left and sit. Studio buzzer. Houston admits Goldie. Houston takes her cloak and Goldie goes to chair. She has her little book of Hamlet. Stein, standing back of table. Hello, Goldie. Who is that? Miss Macduff. I don't know her. What is she going to play? Well, what do you suppose? There's only two lady parts in the play, ain't there? My office boy was reading it, and that's all he could find. She looks very young to play Ophelia. Yes, was Ophelia old? No one but an experienced actress should attempt it. Well, Mr. Webster is back on the show, and he wants this lady for Ophelia. I see. What a pity. I'll introduce you. Goes to Goldie. Goldie, I want you to meet the queen. Introducing. Mrs. Park Gales, Miss Macduff. Goldie crosses to right of table. I am very glad to meet you. How do you do, my dear? I'm so interested to hear that you are going to play Ophelia. Goldie sits. Yes, why Mrs. Gales? Because it is my favorite role. Was, I should say. I've not played the part for some years. Did you really enjoy playing it, Mrs. Gales? Oh, yes, indeed I did. I lived and breathed and was Ophelia. I used to behave very strangely in my dressing room after the performance, especially if there were flowers about. Oh, dear. I hope I won't. Enter Rollo. Houston takes his coat and stick. Rollo wears dinner coat. Good evening, everybody. Sorry I'm late. Lucas, Camperdown, and Skitterling rise and cross to left of center. Stein, introducing them. Well, Mr. Webster, here I am with the troop. Mr. Webster, Mr. Camperdown, Skitlin, and Lucas, Mrs. Potgales. Rollo, bowing to the ladies. Mrs. Gales, and Miss Macduff I've met. To Goldie. How have you been? Never mind. You needn't tell me. To Stein. Camper down for Polonius and Skitterling for the king? You guessed it, Mr. Webster. And Lucas is Ophelia's brother. We can't do much with just these, you know. You haven't even got a ghost. Don't you be worried, Mr. Webster. We will have a dandy ghost Monday. I can tell you even before the evening is over when we will open. Well, we won't open before we're ready, I suppose. Why not? These people all know their parts. There's no use going over them just for their enjoyment. I was talking to George Lucas, and I could hardly stop him from reciting the whole play from the beginning. Bell. Enter Lydia, admitted by Houston. Rollo! Rollo goes to her and leads her down right so they will not be heard. Goldie observes covertly and appears to be absorbed in her book. Rollo, Aunt Lane is downstairs. Why is she? Have you told her? Yes, she says the sooner we do it the better and get it over with. She'll be our friend against Grandfather. Does she know I don't want anyone to know you're related to me? Yes, we practiced my name in the cab. She wouldn't let me come without her. It wasn't necessary for you to come. I kept trying to tell you that all through dinner. Lydia, starting to cry. 
I thought you did. Don't cry now, and I'll introduce you to an actor. To Lucas. Mr. Lucas, Miss Julie Bowton. Lucas, pleased to meet her, takes Lydia to stairway. Lydia cheers up at once. Rollo speaks to Houston. Houston, ask Miss Lane to come up. Goldie, coming to Rollo. Mr. Webster, I don't really feel that I ought to go on with it. I think you must see how different I am from the rest of them. How out of place. Well, so am I. What a pity that Mrs. Park Gales isn't young any more, so she could play Ophelia. Yes, what a pity Methuselah died. He might be playing Hamlet instead of me. Why not let Miss Bouton play my part? Julie? Oh, she can't play anything. She wanted to be in it more, well, to see what's going on. You see, she's, well, you know, she's a sweet little thing, but she's really an awful nuisance. Oh, I see. But I suppose she wasn't always a nuisance, was she? Belle, enter Aunt Lane. Just a moment. Don't move. I'll be right back. Crosses to Aunt Lane. Well, Rollo, this is very nice of you to let me come in upon you unexpectedly. How are you getting on? Why, I was getting on very well. I don't know just what to do about introducing you to these people. Why, certainly, Rollo. I don't mind meeting them in the least. Sits wing chair right. Stein goes center, back of group. Goldie, approaching. Excuse me, Mr. Webster, but I think I'd better go, really. No, I will not excuse you, Miss Macduff. My Aunt Lane. Going to the introducing heavily. Mr. Stein, my Aunt Lane. Mrs. Park Gales, my Aunt Lane. Uh, don't go, please, Miss Macduff. I wish to speak to you. And Mr. Skitterling and Mr. Camperdown, Aunt Lane. Glancing anxiously in Goldie's direction. Mr. Lucas, Aunt Lane. Skitterling, Camperdown, and Lucas cross and bow center and go up left center. Lucas goes up to Lydia. Rollo goes to Goldie. Stein left of Aunt Lane. Aunt Lane to Stein. Mr. Lucas is a very handsome young man. Yes, Lucas is all right if he's had a hair cut. Are you an actor, Mr. Stein? No, I am the manager of the troupe. Rollo's not very strong, you know. I hope you won't let him play anything but some little part, where it won't matter much. He gets very nervous, and then he really should lie down. Well, if he lies down in this piece, I'm afraid it will be noticed. Has the play been named yet? Why, yes, it's been named a long time. It's Hamlet. Hamlet? Really? And is that Mr. Lucas going to play Hamlet? Glancing at Lucas. No, your nephew, Mr. Webster, is going to play Hamlet. Rollo, you're not serious, Mr. Stein. You certainly can't think that Rollo could play Hamlet. Why shouldn't he with such a handsome aunt? Why, it's absurd. I must speak to him. Rollo! Stein up to join Goldie. Rollo to Aunt Lane. Rollo! I want to speak to you about this idea of yours of playing Hamlet. I supposed you were going to do some little thing that you had written yourself, like the charades you used to do with Lydia. But Hamlet, is it true, Rollo, that you think of doing such a thing? Yes, Aunt Lane, it's true. What about it? Rollo, when I think of you in your preambulator, the dearest, sweetest most considerate little baby i ever saw aunt lane i beg that you will forget my character and my perambulator 
I have changed since then. Well, we'll just have to make the best of it, and keep it from your grandfather as long as we can. I'm not going to take my own name. I'm using Rolster, a combination of Rollo and Webster. Rolster. <laughs> oh, Rollo, that's too ridiculous. It sounds like some kind of a mattress. I don't know why. I don't either, but it does. Excuse me, Aunt Lane. I have my business to attend to. Turning to the others. On Monday we'll start rehearsals. There's just one thing I'd like to make sure of now. That is, that the voices go together. My voice isn't very good this evening, Rollo. Uh, that doesn't matter. You won't need to use it. Why not have him harmonize? Stein goes left to piano bench, sits. Suppose we try a few lines. Those who are together in scenes. Suppose you know the part of Laertes, Mr. Lucas? Takes copy of Hamlet from his pocket. Yes, Mr. Webster, certainly. He comes down. Lydia sits on steps. Very good. It's important that your voice should suit Miss Macduff's. Mr. Lucas has a beautiful voice. Yes. <laughs> Miss Macduff, will you come down? We'll start on My Necessaries Are Embarked. Lucas and Goldie down center. Lucas right center. Goldie left center. Rollo down right. Lucas picking it up. My Necessaries Are Embarked. Farewell. And sister? As the wings give benefit and convoy is assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. His hand on Goldie's arm. Uh, don't put your hand on her. No, sir, certainly not. Goldie, casting an inquiring look at Rollo. Shall I? Yes, go on. Will you just say that over again? Just the last line, please. Just the last line. But let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? For Hamlet and the trifling of his favour hold it a fashion and a toy in blood, a violet in the youth of primary nature, forward not permanent, sweet not lasting, the perfume and supplines of a minute no more. Goldie, softly and with raised eyebrows. No more but so? Think it no more for nature. Uh, skip to, and in the morn and liquid dew of youth. And in the morn and liquid dew of youth. He hesitates. Contagious blastments. Contagious blastments? To Rollo. Thank you. Not at all. Our most imminent. Be wary, then. Best safety lies in fear. Youth with self rebels, though none else near. Whatever that means. Capperdown and Skitterling look at him reproachfully. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart but good my brother do not as some ungracious pastors do show me the steep and thorny way to heaven oh dear this spoils it all rollo goes to her lucas drops down right what's the matter this line i can't i just can't say it showing him in the book Camperdown and Skitterling come down left center. Wiles like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance treads. You don't like to say that? Not the wiles like a puffed part. Why not? Well, I don't think it's nice. It's the reckless libertine, I suppose, you don't like? I couldn't say it. Come to think of it, I don't think she said it. We'll cut it out. Mrs. Park Gales, unable to restrain herself. Mr. Webster. Camper down with Skitterling, advance. But Mr. Shakespeare said it. Are you going to improve on Shakespeare, Mr. Webster? Rollo crosses to Camper down. Why not? If Miss Macduff had told Shakespeare that Ophelia wouldn't have said it, He'd have said, wouldn't she? That's all. 
he'd have changed it he was a nice fellow you know nothing godlike or disagreeable about him and there's no reason why just because he's dead ophelia should go on saying that line puffed and reckless libertine is rather disgusting sounds more like polonius mrs park gales rising and coming centre excuse me mr webster but it's all in the way of saying it if you'll pardon a suggestion just give mr lucas a look dear to goldie when you say that let me show you crosses to lucas passes goldie right with a jaunty look at lucas put your arm around me george lucas to rollo may i if she wants you to do not as some ungracious pastors do show me the steep and thorny way to heaven whiles like a puffed and reckless libertine a little nudge here helps it you can do that can't you why i suppose i could crosses back centre mrs park gales crosses to rollo but i don't want her to do it mrs gales ophelia wouldn't have done it oh but i've played the part so many times mr webster and i always did it in fact i was asked to do it it helps mr lucas i don't think mr lucas needs any help and what i want miss macduff to do is to act like ophelia not like an actress playing ophelia oh well just one thing my dear to goldie don't swallow continually the way you do i'm sure ophelia didn't do that i know it's dreadful i can't help it it's because i'm nervous rollo to goldie do it of course ophelia did it wasn't she nervous swallow and skip to whilst himself the primrose path of dalliance treads mrs park gales sits right of table whilst himself the primrose path of dalliance treads and wrecks not his own reed oh fear me not i stay too long but here my father comes shall i come in mr webster yes for a minute camperdown strides to lucas yet here laertes aboard aboard for shame the wind sets in the shoulder of your sail and you are stayed for there my blessing with you laying his hand on the top of lucas's head which lucas does not enjoy that will do it's all right to goldie i wish there was more of you camper down with sarcasm won't you have time to write something in before we open mr webster what do you mean well i only thought mr camper down an actor should never think at rehearsals some people can't help thinking mr stein displeased crosses to skitterling lucas to goldie as soon as we get easy i think you will be happy in the scenes we have together do you they start up centre together rollo follows taking goldie back lucas sits on steps with lydia you'd better sit here by aunt lane aunt lane to goldie my dear you'll make a lovely ophelia oh miss lane do you think so i feel that shakespeare hates me so already i can hardly stand it oh but you mustn't feel that way must she rollo that shakespeare hates her why he's just standing around somewhere hoping she won't hate him try the soliloquy rollo go on try it uh, i'd rather not if you don't mind i wouldn't make any changes rollo didn't somebody say we should neither add nor take away from it that was the bible dear oh so it was i think we'll wait until the cast is complete before we rehearse any more i'm having a little supper served in the grill won't you all go down please aunt lane let mr stein take you down i don't think i will rollo of course you will it's jolly down there i've ordered crab meat especially for you 
Why, how could you when you didn't know I was coming? Well, I was afraid you would. Go along, there's a dear. Mr. Stein, will you take down Aunt Lane? Aunt Lane, glancing at Lydia. Oh, Rollo, how about Miss Bowton? Miss Bowton? Lydia, who has become absorbed with Lucas. What's the matter? Supper in the grill. Uh, Mr. Lucas, will you take Miss Bowton? With pleasure. Exit Aunt Lane, Stein, Lucas, and Lydia. Won't you gentlemen take down Mrs. Park Gales? To Camperdown and Skitterling as they start for the door. Skitterling, returning to Mrs. Park Gales. I beg your pardon, Mrs. Gales. So do I, I'm sure. Pray don't. I never blame people for hurrying to eat when they're hungry. As for me, I had a hearty dinner not so long ago. Spoken as they move arm in arm to door right and exit. Rollo to Goldie, who starts toward the door. Are you hungry? No, Mr. Webster. Then wait a minute. I have something I want to say to you. What is it, Mr. Webster? I've forgotten. But haven't you something you want to say to me? Yes, Mr. Webster. You shouldn't have sent me the roses. Goldie crosses left center. Rollo right center. I should. But I do wish you'd tell me where you live. I'd like to be able to address my own roses instead of sending them to a drug store. I wouldn't mind telling you, but I'm so afraid you might come to see me. Oh? You wouldn't want me to do that? No, there really isn't room. Isn't room? Well, there's a hall outside, isn't there? Yes, but I wouldn't like to have you standing in the hall. I could bring a chair with me. I've never had such a curiosity to see an apartment. You really must let me come and just look at it through the keyhole. It really isn't an apartment, you see. It's just a room and bath and kitchenette. To tell the truth... If you're going to tell the truth, uh, perhaps you'd better sit down. Goldie, sitting, as he suggests, at left of table. There really isn't any kitchenette. I mean, the bath and kitchenette are the same. Rollo, sitting at right of table. Oh, they are? I have a little alcohol lamp and I make coffee in the bathtub. Then when the lamp explodes, it doesn't set fire to anything. You must give me your word of honor never to do that again. Why, there isn't the slightest danger. I make coffee and boil eggs and make toast every morning, because we don't like to go out for breakfast. Besides, there's the baby. Oh, your baby? Oh, no, I wish it was. My sister's baby, such a darling. She's been staying with me. But she went out west yesterday and took the baby with her. That's why I'd been crying. Oh, I see. She quarreled with her husband because he gave up an awfully good position in an automobile factory to go into the movies. He's very good looking. So Tilda left him and came east. But now he's gone back to the factory and had quite a raise in salary, so she's gone back to him. And taken the baby? Yes. Oh, well... Maybe she'll send it on occasionally. I should think it would have been pretty crowded. You and Tilda and the baby, all in one bathtub. Room, I mean. It didn't seem so. The baby was a tiny little thing. It had great big blue eyes and curls all over its head. I know. They often do. The dearest thing was the way it would go to sleep in my arms. It really, well, it seems ridiculous to say it, but it seemed to go to sleep better for me than for Tilda. I don't think that is surprising at all. It was so wonderful to sit and watch it. It looked just like an angel, and it gave you the most beautiful feeling that you weren't doing anything at all, and yet were doing the most important thing in the world, putting a baby to sleep. Yes, it is important, for if they didn't go to sleep... It would drive all the rest of us crazy. We had a gardener once whose baby never went to sleep. It cried all night, and we had to discharge him. 
Why, the poor little thing. What do you suppose was the matter with it? Oh, I don't know. Babies are like human beings, I think. Some of them just downright disagreeable and dissatisfied with everything. This baby's mother had splendid bread, too. I used to sneak down to the cottage often for bread and sugar. Maybe the baby wasn't old enough to appreciate bread and sugar. I know. But why not look ahead a little, even if you are a baby? Why not look ahead a little even if you're not? Do you mean anything by that? Yes. Of course, I've no right to say it, so I won't. Tell me about yourself when you're at home. I suppose you have a home. Good heavens! I should say I had. I don't like to think of it. However, what sort of thing would you like me to tell you? Oh, about the house and where it is and what you do. Well, let's see. It's a large, rambling old house in the country. The only trouble is, it never rambles. It stays right there. And is there a garden? And has it roses in it? I should say so. Old-fashioned roses about as big as a quarter, with hundreds of leaves, and thousands of rosebugs. Oh, how lovely. And has it got mignonette in it, too? Oh, Lord, yes. Awfully big, fat mignonette, and bluebells, and campanulas, and laburnum, and dulcinium, and coreopsis, and cockalorums, and all those things. Oh, it must be lovely. Now what shall I tell you? What do you do? Nothing much. I ride some. Oh, I've always wanted to do that. On horseback, you mean? Yes, on and off. I started when I was only five, and I got thrown, and broke my shoulder and my collarbone and my nose all the first year. It isn't quite right yet. Feeling nose. Maybe you've noticed it? No, I just thought it was sort of Roman. No, it's sort of Shetland. Tell me about the family. Oh, it's just Grandfather and Lydia and Aunt Lane. What an odd name. Yes, I had two Aunt Annas. So Grandfather decided to call one by her last name. That was Aunt Lane. She was very angry, and she came to see Grandfather about it. And she's lived with us ever since. And what is your grandfather like? Rollo, frowning. Oh, he's a terror. Wants everyone to do what he wants. What does he want you to do? He'd like to have me interested in air brakes. Air brakes? Tell me about them. Well, when you're on a train and it gives a lurch, and all the people sitting down are thrown on the floor, and all the people standing up are thrown on top of them. That's the air brakes working. I've always wondered what that was. I should think you'd want to do something about it. I don't. The only thing I want to do is to have you tell me, if everything should come out all right, to have you tell me... Enter Houston. Coughs discreetly. Uh, something about your grandmother? I'm afraid they can't hold the table much longer, sir. Well, why don't you get a quiet table they can hold? I think we had better go, Mr. Webster. She starts off. Oh, dear. I don't like the idea of that restive table. Houston, can't you make us an omelet or something? I suppose not. Follows Goldie off. Houston stalks across the stage in Shakespearean style. Ah, uh, yes, yes, indeed. Those were the days. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, nor windy suspiration of forced breath, no, nor the fruitful river of the eye, nor the dejected pavior of the visage. 
together with all forms, modes, shapes of grief. Bell. Startled back to the reality of his position, he goes to door. Admits Lydia and Lucas. Lydia, sitting on arm of chair, right. I want my cape, Houston. My hat, please. To Lydia. Why can't I take you home? Oh, you're awfully kind, but I'm going with Miss Lane. You see, we're stopping at the same hotel. Well, can't I take you both? What hotel is it? Well, it isn't really a hotel. It's the Colony Club. Aunt Lane likes it. She always stops there. Aunt Lane? Is she your aunt? Lydia crosses to center, followed by Lucas. Oh, dear, you won't tell, will you? Of course not. If you don't want me to. Rollo doesn't want anyone to know, because people might think he let me be in the play just because I'm his sister. I see. You haven't told me yet what part you're playing. I didn't like to. It's so small. It's prologue. Oh, prologue. For us and for our tragedy? Yes. You see, I've never played a part before. I see. I wish we had some scenes together. Ah, oh, it's awfully kind of you to say so. Houston brings Kate to place on Lydia's shoulders. Lucas takes it from him and performs the service. And if I can be of any help to you, you mustn't hesitate to call upon me. Oh, thank you. I'm sure you can. You speak so beautifully. Do you think so, really? Oh, yes. Why, everything you say sounds just like Shakespeare. I mean, I mean, I can't imagine you saying anything just ordinary, like, what time does the train go, or anything like that. I suppose you do, though, sometimes. You're awfully amusing. Am I? I wish I were. I live such a secluded life that I don't know whether I am or not. Houston approaches with a hat. Is this your hat, sir? Lucas, barely glancing at it. No. You live in the country, don't you? Yes, with my grandfather at Shellbrook. He has a very large place, and he's awfully lonely, so we have to live with him. I see. But don't you like the country? I long so for the birds and flowers at this season of the year. Long for my own country place in the hills of Surrey. Yes, at this season of the year it's beginning to be nice, but in winter it's so terribly cold. Lucas, curious about the house. But you have steam heat, don't you? Not outdoors. And, oh, it's not life in the country, is it? Neither is this. I don't know where we can find life. Real life. Houston, with another hat. Is this your hat, sir? No. To Lydia. I sometimes find it in a book. Sometimes on my horse galloping in the teeth of the wind. Sometimes in a pair of friendly eyes. I know exactly what you mean. Phone rings. Lydia crosses to mirror on wall left. Houston, answering phone. Yes, sir. Very well, sir. To Lydia. I'm to take down all the wraps, and your Aunt Lane's cab is here, miss. My hat, please. Houston brings the wraps and all three hats, which he extends. Lucas takes one. I offered you that one, sir. Thanks very much. Aren't you forgetting this? Picking up Goldie's wrap. I was told to forget it, sir. Rollo entering. Hurry along, Houston. To Lydia. Miss Boughton, are you going? Exit Houston. Lydia, crossing briskly right. Yes, Mr. Webster. Miss Lane is waiting. I know it. I hope your play will be a great success. Seeing Goldie's rap. There's someone's rap. Houston's a stupid idiot, isn't he? Isn't he? But then... So is almost everybody. With a meaning look. Oh, excuse me. I didn't understand. Didn't understand what? It's your wild oat. Good night. Good night. Lydia and Lucas exit. Rollo lights cigarette, gets pillows from window seat, and puts them in wing chair, humming blushing June roses. Enter Houston. Have they gone, Houston? Why? Some of them have, and some of them haven't, sir. There was a taxi, and quite an argument about how many could get into it. I see. Shall I close up, sir? Why should you? 
it begins to dawn upon me that you don't know very much houston perhaps not sir a man in the city is quite different from a man in the country houston yes sir and the service he requires is different a little intelligence in the city is quite desirable sometimes i don't know if i make myself clear well i'm sure i don't if you don't sir i told you to keep miss goldie's cloak here and you did it and shouldn't i have done it sir you should but you don't suppose it's going to end there do you what sir rollo with a gesture of impatience <sighs> you win houston listen will you when miss macduff comes for her cloak when she enters the door which i will open i want you to come from that point what point sir that chair which chair sir the second chair where you will be standing with the cloak and be saying look sir miss goldie's cloak has been forgotten yes sir it isn't possible that you understand me yes sir i do let's see you do it then rollo gives him the rap goes to door admitting imaginary person houston carefully taking position tragically look sir miss goldie's cloak has been forgotten yes but don't be so gloomy about it after all it doesn't amount to anything no sir what's the matter well sir if i might suggest something certainly go ahead i wouldn't say miss goldie sir oh no sir i'd say miss macduff i think i could speak it much more naturally with that alteration certainly say what seems natural only convey my meaning houston pleased yes sir she's a lovely girl houston her only fault is that she doesn't think she can play ophelia <laughs> but when you think of other people's faults uh, that isn't much i have the greatest admiration and respect for her and if anyone were to say anything against her in my presence their life wouldn't be worth a straw looks a little fiercely at houston i understand sir bell rollo motions houston back in position goes to the door and opens it admitting mr stein houston not seeing him fatuously oh look sir miss macduff's cloak has been mislaid left here quite unbeknownst i should say stein taking cloak just what i came for thank you good night mr webster exits rollo looks at houston with disgust curtain end of act one scene two